Karma Adventures! In today's video, we are going to tell you everything you need to know before you go to Kasamo. So when Max was planning our trip to Kasamo, he couldn't really find any like helpful videos on YouTube. So we thought we would share our top tips from our recent trip to Kasamo. And if we miss any points or if you have any questions, make sure you let us know in the comments and we'll be happy to help. Let's get into the video. Okay, so first things first, how do you actually get to Kasamo? So there's basically two ways to get there. You can fly to either Tirana, the capital of Albania, or to Corfu in Greece. We flew from London to Tirana and we didn't go to Corfu because it was much more expensive and it was longer as well, so it just made more sense to go to the capital. Kasamo is actually four hours away from Tirana, so we decided to rent a car. And Tirana Airport makes it really easy because there are over 20 car rental places there. But we actually booked it through Ryanair and we wouldn't recommend you doing that because we actually got into a little bit of confusion. So when we got to the company, which was called Go Mobility, um, they said that we had to pay an extra insurance, but we did pay through we did pay insurance through Ryanair. So we were just a bit confused. Like we don't really know whose fault it is. We ended up paying two insurances, and um, basically the one through Ryanair was useless. An extra one hundred euros. <laughs> And if you don't know this, the trip to Kasamo was actually a surprise. I was blindfolded for the journey because Max planned a birthday trip. And she had no idea. It was quite epic. And we have uploaded a YouTube video. So if you want to check it out. So basically when we got to the airport, because we were trying to hide the destination from me, I just sat at this chair whilst Max went to get the car. And normally when you went a car, it's pretty quick. He took like 40 minutes and I just gave up and I started looking for him close to an hour and I was just burning in the sun <laughs> And most likely the other thing you want to know when you arrive to a country is about the internet data SIM card It was very complicated to get one. In fact, we didn't get one because it was so expensive And not just that but like most airports you have Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi in Tirana Airport just doesn't work mm -hmm. like you can't connect to it it shows but it just doesn't give you internet. There are two SIM card companies at the airport and they were just outrageously priced. It was 30 euros for like 30 days of internet and five euros if you wanted the actual physical SIM card. I'm not even sure how you get data without the physical <laughs> SIM card, but... And let's not forget, Albania is the fourth poorest country in Europe. So we thought it was gonna be slightly cheaper. Much cheaper? <laughs> Don't forget that Albania is not part of the European Union. So double check with your phone provider if you've got that country within your Go roaming plan, because we didn't. So you're probably wondering, how did we actually get from Tirana to Xavil? Without data. <laughs> <laughs> and driving for about four hours. Well, we use an app called Waze, and this is not sponsored, but it really saved our lives. It's just an app that we use all the time when we travel and we thought we'd share it with you guys just in case you didn't know about it and we were able to use it offline and we did make it to Kasamo driving there but it definitely wasn't without its obstacles. Driving in Albania was very intense. Firstly, most of the people don't comply with the driving laws and then the main motorway was only two lanes and the right lane always had potholes so even if you were driving slow or fast everyone was on the left lane which made it quite complicated and perhaps sometimes a lot of traffic. And Max just wanted to comply with the regulations, with the laws, the driving laws, and he stuck to the right side. And then we just start passing all these potholes. And I was like, I think you should move to the left. Yeah. <laughs> and something really expected that happened to us was when we were driving around looking for a SIM card, we decided to go to the Tirana like city center and we encountered so much traffic. So we basically got stuck in traffic for like two hours. So if you do plan on going to the city center, just be aware that you will probably be stuck there for a while. So avoid that direction, <laughs> go straight to Kasamo. And if you're not renting a car, you can always take the bus, but it will take a lot longer. And now let's jump into the people in Albania. First impressions at the airport weren't great. We felt that people weren't as welcoming. But the more time we spent in Albania, we realized that people were actually really nice and very friendly. By the way, don't expect people to speak English from the airport to Xamil. In fact, we stopped in around three gas stations and hardly anyone spoke English. 
But in Kasamo, because it's such a touristic place, everybody speaks English really well. One of the most important questions whenever you go anywhere and plan a trip is where to stay. From our experience in Kasamo, there are two main beaches and we felt like the one that we stayed was the best one. And our recommendation is based on how close these beaches are to the three inhabited islands. And this is because it's one of the main attractions of Kasamo. However, we'll be speaking about this slightly later in this video. And the section where we stayed had bigger beaches and it was also closer to the three islands. We were only one minute walk from the main beach, which it was just spectacular. It was insane. <laughs> when I was doing my research on what hotel to stay, we decided to go beachfront. Now, in Kisami, you've got both ends. You've got very expensive hotels and budget hotels, and most of them have swimming pools. But do you really need a swimming pool when you've got the beach one minute walk away? And that's why we decided to stay in Emar Hotel Kasamo. It did not have a swimming pool, but honestly, right in front of us, there was this really nice hotel with a pool. We didn't see a single person inside because you are one minute away from the beach. Don't bother spending that extra money. <laughs> when Max was doing the research, he told me that most of the high-end beachfront hotels, the prices varied from 80 euros to 100 euros, but we only spent 40 pounds a night. And I think, that's budget for a beachfront hotel. But be mindful that we went in May, so the prices will obviously vary during the peak seasons. So if you want to know more about where we stayed, we did do a separate video reviewing our hotel, so make sure you go and watch it. Before we talk about things to do in Kasamo, let's talk about food. We love the food in Kasamo, but I got food poisoning. First things first, we went to the supermarket and we got some snacks and some ham to make some wraps for our adventure going to the islands. And on that same day that we had the ham, we also went to a restaurant that was amazing and they had fresh food. So we ate this amazing pasta and pizza. And you're probably thinking, who eats pizza in Albania? This is because there's a lot of Italian influence in Albania. And that's why most of the menus that you will find have pizza, risotto, pasta. Now back to the food poisoning story. <laughs> After a very long day out, we got back to the hotel and Max just had a really bad stomach. But I was fine that night. It was just the next day I woke up and it was a roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> Basically, I had food poisoning. I had diarrhea, vomiting. And on the way to the airport, we had to make loads of stops so I could just go to the toilet. And she actually threw up. When we got to the airport, I had to ask Max to go and basically find the first aid because I knew I had fever. So it turns out I had fever and we were very worried that we weren't going to be able to board the flight, but it was fine. So a lot of restaurants in Kasamil have this ocean view. And when you're having dinner, watching that sunset, it feels like a movie. But something that you must be thinking about, is Kasamil expensive? Well, we found that eating out is actually not cheap but not expensive. For a pizza, you can expect to pay around nine to 11 euros, which is a fair price. And these were the best pizzas we've ever had, like better than Italy. Sorry, you might not agree, but it's true. And we keep talking about euros, but what currency do they actually use in Albania? Albanian leg. One euro equates to a hundred Albanian leg, but most of these places do accept euros, but make sure that before you pay, you ask to get euros back because some places will just give you leg. If you're paying in cash. And that's a very good point. If you are driving, just make sure you have cash on you because the petrol stations tend to just take cash. And now on to the most fun part of this video. What can you do in Kasamo? Firstly, Kasamo is a very family friendly destination. It's got clear water, white sand beaches. And this makes it easier to keep an eye on your kid the fact that the water is transparent, you won't be able to lose them. <laughs> and because of its location, the sea is actually really peaceful and you don't get very big waves or anything like that. So it's quite safe as well. But at the same time, it's also a great destination for the Gen Zs. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a great nightlife and there's also plenty of beach clubs and who doesn't want to have a cocktail with that white sand beach and the beautiful landscape of Albania? And also, it's the most Instagrammable place we've ever been to. <laughs> if you are like us and you like a bit more of the adventure side, make sure you do one of the water activities. There are so many to choose from. 
kayaking, paddleboarding, jet skis. And most of these places will just let you rent the equipment and go to the islands. And trust us, you really want to be doing that in Kisabel. And another really cool thing you can do is rent a boat. You can do it with a skipper or without, and you don't actually need a license. So go for it. It is a bit expensive. So. But I mean, if you're going with a big group of people, you can always just share the price. And in fact, we saw a lot of young people renting boats and it sounds like an amazing experience. It looks like they were having the time of their lives. <laughs> but don't worry, if you're looking for a more relaxed holiday, Kisamil is still the perfect destination. You can walk around the town, you can watch the beautiful sunset and we recommend you watch the sunset in this spot. It seemed like it was the most popular and it was packed of people watching the sunset. And of course, you can just go to the beach. But be aware that all of these sun lounges and sun beds, you have to pay for them. There will be a person there collecting the money when you sit down. <laughs> On our walks around Kasamil, we found that a lot of places were either empty or under construction. Now, this may be due to the season. I mean, it was slightly before summer. So it could be that they were getting ready for the high seasons. It seems like a bit of a trend in the Balkan countries because when we went to Montenegro, it was literally like that. Yes, Everything uh, was falling apart and apparently in the summer it looked amazing. So if you do go in the summer, do let us know in the comments if that's still the case. Although we didn't go in the height of the summer, we went in May. The weather was so good. It was so unexpected. Especially because on our way to Kisamil, it was raining and we thought that the holiday was ruined. But in fact, we burned so much. It's been like two weeks. My skin is still peeling off. We only went to Kisamil for two days, but if you do go for a little bit longer and you want to make a day trip, we highly recommend you visit the Rande, the Blue Eye and the UNESCO Heritage Sites. There are two. Or maybe even a day trip to Corfu. So to conclude, is it worth visiting Kisamil? Absolutely. Absolutely! It is just a stunning place. And although we thought it was going to be cheaper, it was still a reasonable price. And overall, it's just the perfect place to relax and enjoy your time in this paradise of a destination. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like, like and, and subscribe. subscribe. If you still haven't watched our latest video, make sure you click here because if YouTube is recommending this video, it means that you must watch it.